Hello, it's Jeannie. How are you? I hope you're well. Um, today's video is a long one. And it took everything I could to keep it condensed. Because as you see by the title, it's a recap of our trip to England. And I've got four million photos that I could be showing you, but I won't. I'll spare you. Although, here's the thing about this video. I'm going to go through everything. One of my wishes is that you just fall asleep and maybe come back and put it on again and try to, you know, watch it if you want. But, um, you know, it's just a long recap and some of you will get through it, and some of you it will take three or four or ten times. That's okay. It's either a blah, blah, blah for you, or, you know, something of interest. So, it took a long time to get this going. A couple weeks, we came back and just hit the ground running. Uh, we were home for a couple days, and then we've had a couple of trips even since then, you know, going out to California and some other things. So, anyway, I've got a cup of tea. Hopefully I won't slurp, but if I do, forgive me. I'm going to ask you right up front, because almost every creator I know is having, I don't know, issues with the algorithm. And people, you all, write to me to saying two things. I wasn't notified when a video came up. And I wasn't still subscribed. So, make sure you're subscribed. Have your notification bell on. And put a like there, the thumbs up. Because that helps tell the algorithm whatever that thing is that were, you know, okay to watch, that were, were liked. So I'm doing that on the videos that I watch because I realized that I was watching things, making a nice comment, but not leaving a thumbs up as well. And so put the thumbs up, please. <laughs> so, and for all, all your creators, especially, you know, the ones that are your favorites, because it helps them truly. It helps their channel. Okay, where do I start? We did everything on this trip to England for two weeks, 15 days actually, carry on. And I'm very glad because we stayed in some very character type hotels with lots of narrow stairways. And so if you have a big international 70 pound bag, that's gonna be hard to get up and down those stairs. So a little carry on, if you can do it, do it. I didn't have one regret with packing too little. As a matter of fact, there were two or three tops, two tops I did not wear. See, and same thing with my husband. So, because I know this is kind of like an epic video, um, I'm going to get right to it and try to be succinct and try not to be fast talking because I can be. I know it when I get excited. So, I'm going to try and stay ASMR-ish, okay? So, every now and then I'll have to smack myself. When you're taking a trip, especially a big trip, you want to stay organized. And this slipped right into our suitcase front. And it's just, I want to show you this. I made a spreadsheet because I love spreadsheets. I'm an Excel geek. Um, just about everything we were doing on what day who we were meeting up with. And what you'll notice are a lot of blank spaces on this because I didn't keep it um, really tight. I left it to, what do you want to do today? And we would just go. 
we had two or three options available to us. And if it was particularly, you know, rainy, we would do one thing, and if not, we'll do that. Luckily, the weather was amazing, amazing. We had two half days of drizzle, and one, you know, one of those was a little rainier. I had, because everywhere I go, a map, but we didn't need it, not once, not once, because the GPS there on our car was so amazing. So anyway, keep a file on where you're staying, your receipts, you know, that kind of thing, a little printout of your plan, a generalized plan. So, I am going to talk along with these photos as I show them to you. And I'll even show you, I'll pause it to show you some of the souvenirs we got. So, I'm going to try and do it without glasses. We'll see how that works. Okay. So, the morning that we were leaving, Leo was acting really funky. I think he got something bad because it was more than just like knowing we were leaving. He was acting sick. So I let our house key, uh, sitter know if he's not better in a day, take him to the vet, whatever it takes. And she let us know that he was fine the next day. So that was a load off my mind. So we got up and headed to the airport probably about 10 a.m. We had a one o'clock flight and we just wanted to get there nice and early, go into the Polaris lounge and have something to eat. So here's my husband kind of in our first area where we sat and then we moved once we got our food. And um, so here's the Polaris lounge, if you've never seen it, in Houston, some of the food that is there available and we just wanted to get you know something to kind of tide us over until our meal on the plane so there it is nice salad bar um, you know lots of clean very clean things you know add-ons and um, so I made myself a little plate just some protein a little bit of rice and now it's time to get on the plane. And trips like this, we pay for first class. Now we do get a discount because we are airline employees, we're retired, um, but we didn't want to risk going standby and not having first class because I need to lay down my back. Absolutely must lie down. So um, this is, what our seats look like. You're welcomed with some champagne and that's my seat 3A and Zane was right behind me in 4A. So the first thing I do is just get all settled, get my book, um, my eye mask, definitely need that, my Manta mask, and get ready to hunker down once I have my meal and get everything I might need because I don't want to get up and go through the bins. You see? So. There's Zane behind me. And it was so funny. The captain came out and said, said, would you guys like to see the cockpit, you know, the flight deck, which is what they call it now. And he asked me first, he's like, would you like to come up and see the flight deck, which was so nice. And I said, we just retired 36 years getting my husband out of that flight deck. He, oh, really? So he goes back to my husband and they start chatting. It's like, yeah, I'm going to be retiring and da 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 da. And so, no, we didn't need to see the flight deck. But I thought that was very nice on his behalf. 
So I got my movie um, ready to watch. It was the Amy Winehouse. Oh, I loved Amy Winehouse. So I watched kind of her biography, had that ready to go. And here we are taking off out of Houston. And I love this part, the anticipation, um, you know, as we're just ready to go. So there it is, clear skies, 37, 38,000 feet. I had my meal, I had the chicken. This is the Polaris um, menu. And here we are landing in London. Now, I was a little miffed because no one woke me up, like my husband, to get a cup of coffee or to have a little breakfast or to go to the bathroom, to brush my hair, to do my face. He's like, honey, we're landing in about 30 minutes. Hello, it takes me 15 minutes just to figure out who I am when I wake up. So I had no time to go to the restroom, get my coffee, anything. He let me sleep. I could have let the flight attendants know, wake me up for breakfast, but I didn't. My fault. So we landed and grabbed our overhead um, carry-on luggage. And I said, I need my coffee. So we, here we are at London Heathrow. Walking straight out because we don't have to pick up any baggage. So we headed straight over to get some coffee at Cafe Nero, I think it was called. And I tell you, this was a good cup of coffee and I was hungry again, so I had some carbs. That croissant was good. So we got our car, we went to the car rental agency and we rented a Mercedes automatic. Zane did all the driving because I did not trust any of the driving to me. I didn't want to deal with that. Being on the other side of the road, on the other side of the car, let him do it. And he did a pretty good job. We had an excellent, excellent um, navigation system, a very lovely voiced English woman, and me with my phone. And so I'm comparing things with her and, um, you know, making sure as we hit these roundabouts, all 25,812 of them, that he's in the correct lane getting in and then getting off. Um, yeah, that was a little hair raising. But what's nice is that the bigger roundabouts in the bigger cities and the bigger towns have stoplights. So that makes it a little easier. And they have the, the um, markers on the pavement that tell you, you know, if you're getting on the M this or the M that. or So that helped. We got in early. So we decided since, I mean, it was like 7.30 and by the time we got our car, 8 or 8.30, but that's way too early to check in. And the first place we were going to was Bath. So we decided to go to Stonehenge, drive out to Stonehenge. So we are in an English car on the wrong side of the car, going out onto the wrong side of the road. I've put him in charge. So. Where's the gas pedal? I can't feel that there's no gas. Whoops, it's on the wrong side. Oh God help us. And look at this fantastic navigation. Now, I knew it was for us. Look at the name of this first roundabout, or one of them, Countess. So, he did really good, kind of staying in the slow to medium lanes. I tried not to suck in wind too much through my teeth. And we arrived at Stonehenge. And that was awesome. Look at the weather. When we had checked our weather apps, by the way, the week before it said rain every day, it didn't. So we spent the day 
morning, several hours touring around Stonehenge and just we walked from the visitor center all the way out there, which took about 30 minutes. So we're on day one and we are, look at this, walking up the road to Stonehenge since we can't check into our hotel for a while and we landed early decided to come to Stonehenge on our way to Bath and make a nice diversion. Now we could take a bus. They say it's a 30 minute walk, but I think if we walk fast, it'll, we can do it in 20, right? Yep. <laughs> it's a gorgeous day. Cloudy, breezy, just a windbreaker. And I know I am making this like super bumpy, but oh well. So here we are walking around the stones. Magnificent. And I know there are some other stone circles. We did not get to them though. Um, but we just really enjoyed our time here. And now it's time to drive up to Bath and find our hotel. Some of these streets were so confusing. People park facing the wrong way. So you'll see them parked one way and then the other. And sometimes we thought we were on a one-way road. We weren't. And so here's our first hotel, the Queensberry Hotel in Bath. And it was a great location, but look at the stairs. You go down, you go up, you go down, you go up. And this is why having a small carry-on is important. So, and I'll show you our lovely room here as well. A lot of stairs, a lot of working out. So I was able to eat very guilt-free throughout England because of all the walking we did. Yeah, we're still going upstairs. It's still escalating. So here's our room. Not there. I would recommend any of the hotels we stayed at. I love this little device because I can put my Apple Watch, my earpods, and my phone right on this one charger that is plugged in via the USB cord, and boom, all three are getting charged. So we got settled and went out for a walk all around Bath. And by this time, I'm hungry. So it's time to feed baby. And we found the raven and it was good. I had a steak and ale pie and so did Zane and ordered two beers, some ales.
all these don't that doesn't that just look so delicious and it was so as we walked around we saw this spa thermi spa someone said don't go there it's too expensive but we booked it for the next day and I'm glad we did. I am very glad we did. First, we went to the Bath Abbey. That is definitely worth it, walking around there. bought my mom these this little church mouse because she likes little micey things and this was one of our wettest days which was no big deal I love this come judge my budge so now we went to the Roman baths and toured them and what's really great is you can pick up um, this phone thing, you dial up numbers in each area and the pre-recorded voice in whatever language you want tells you about where you are and what you're looking at. I love that. So it's a little drizzly on the outside part, but it was still fascinating. And this entire tour was just chock full of so many historical things from the coins to interactive stations they had set up. It, they have done an excellent job. And they had a water fountain with the mineral waters. And I thought it would be cool and refreshing. It was actually very warm and very minerally. Um, I wouldn't say it tasted good, but what the heck. And now it's time for our spa day and we cannot film so these are stock images from their site. This is the indoor pool slash spa. And then there's one up on the roof and you are so buoyant because of all the minerals in the water. Also inside this spa are steam baths, infrared saunas, there's an ice bath, um, different showers. It is amazing and I'm so glad we did this and we followed it up with massages. We had an hour massage which what a way to get over jet lag. So now that we're all clean and you know detoxed and purified it's time to go get some fish and chips and this place was recommended to us and I have to tell you it's called seafoods traditional fish and chips and I'm glad we checked them out and I hope you do too we made friends with the manager there Nikki just a lovely gal lovely lovely gal and um, 
she just made the experience that much better. So we ordered fish and chips. And um, so this is my plate. We ordered a couple of beers and we got some curry sauce, some barbecue sauce and some, um, and the mushy peas. I've, I've followed them now on Instagram as well. I wasn't a fan of mushy peas, but that's a thing in England. So if you are in Bath and you want good fish and chips, go into this chip shop, Seafoods, Google them. They're right down in the main area and tell Nikki hello from the two Texans and that you saw her here. So we are tired and it's time to head back and go to sleep. I think we're going to bed now by 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock now, but that's okay. So we woke up and we, and we had room service with some juice, um, some coffee, and some muesli, and a little fruit to start our day. And then we did some walking around, found another coffee shop, had some good, delicious coffee, and then went to the Jane Austen Center and did a whole tour, interactive thing there. I tried on one of the period hats. That's Jane Austen right there. I'm the short one on the left. And this was her writing room. So of course, I had to sit down with the quill and leave my mark. What do you think I wrote? Then we did some more walking around and shopping and actually went and had some custom belts made for ourselves. The reason I'm showing you this dress is um, I saw this and I thought of Sherry from Mid Mod Meridian. So Sherry, if you're watching this, if we weren't doing carry-on, I would have bought this for you, honest. This is so perfect for your channel. Then we just walked around. It was overcast, but not raining. And, you know, the bath area is just beautiful. And I can imagine this on a, you know, sky, blue day, you know, with the blue sky, but just beautiful. And we enjoy just walking. And we probably got about 12,000 steps in and we walked where Jane Austen would have been walking as well, which was kind of cool. We found this labyrinth and I looked at how long it would take me to get to the other side and I cheated. Yay! This is a first. We found a cute little children's shop that did hand knitted things. And yes, I did have to get something for my granddaughter, but it was small. And then we went to Sally Lunds because one of you recommended, actually several of you did. So we went by to have the Sally Lunds experience. Zane had the Sally Lunn bun with some stuff on it and I had a quarter of one of these scones. I just didn't have an appetite and yes we did cream first, jam on top because that's a, a national thing there. Downstairs they have a museum and we walked around that and just kind of saw what it would have been like at that time making those big brioche type buns. There's Sally Lunn. And then I was going to do a video but realized 
didn't record what we wanted it to record. It didn't sound good, so we scrapped it. But I have these little lavalier type, um, whoops, just turned it on, you know, that I can wear here so that I can walk around and record. And their road, which I love, but they're not recording. I don't have the settings quite right because I only hear it when I record in one ear. So I've got to figure this out. Um, but I know a lot of ASMR artists who use these, so I know it's good. It's just, we've got to train me. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to show you this. When we were at Sally Lund's, I bought some of their tea. It's one of the souvenirs we got, the Sally Lund tea. Now, I do have to say, it is very, very ground up, not very leafy. So it even goes through our strainer. So I wasn't too happy about that. But it's good tea. It tastes good. So that's one of the souvenirs I'm catching up with that now. I also bought a, just a notebook. I bought this in Bath just a lined blank notebook that I took notes of what we were doing each day because you forget you forget little things so it's nice to write them down and look back and remember them and um, so I'll show you some of the things I got as we go along okay so after we did the video that didn't record, we went downstairs, all those stairs, and had a drink. I had a white wine and he had, I don't know, an old fashioned or something. And we ordered a little bit of food because we didn't want to eat a big heavy meal before going to bed. So we just had some platter they made us. And now it's day five and we're heading to Oxford to meet up with my dear friend Stephanie from Secret Scholar. Check out her page. And here she is on the left with her colleague Peter. And they gave us the best tour behind the scenes all day long that anyone could ever wish for. Then the dining here is this is the ogre. This lovely gentleman Peter, I think, taught at Oxford for 40 something years. They had a beautiful garden. Smart. She's so smart. <laughs> She's the smart one. <laughs> she was indeed. Wow. I loved the grounds here at Oxford. Just all these colleges were just amazing. And this is where the library parts of Harry Potter were filmed. So if it looks too familiar to some of you Harry Potter fans, yeah, this is it. The books here you could not touch. They were wired uh, and the alarms would go off if you touched them. I could sit in this 
library all day. We walked through a room with some cloaks, some scholar gowns, and I had to put one on. I don't know whose this was, but I had to try it on. I got to meet Stephanie's lovely family and we went out to dinner and ended our evening that way and headed up to the Cotswolds, Stow in the Wold. And this is where we had our room at the Old Stocks Inn. Fantastic. And here's this room. Look at this bone. Look at this. Our room overlooked the square. Zane had to watch his head, so of course I took the side with that angled Eve. So it's day six and we are going to walk around Stow in the Wold and just check it out. The weather was lovely actually and cleared up. It was a little gray starting out. We found a place that we would be eating at later and we joined up with a civic group that gives tours on Sundays around the little village of Stowe. And it was a, for a five pound donation. They give you a nice walk around the town and explain things to you. It was really great. And for Lord of the Rings fans, does this look familiar? This was the inspiration for um, J.R. Tolkien's stories. That one portal, or that one door. And I found a little friend, this cute little ladybug. The bells were beautiful, and later that day they had bell ringing practice for three hours. Those bells rang in various configurations. It was, <laughs> I'd never heard anything like that. And so here we are back at that little shop having some coffee and pastry. And these are the newspapers that I bought and lost. I don't know, I think I left them in the car. It was when Catherine, Princess Catherine, um, I should say Catherine, Princess of Wales, made that video I love her, I love William, and I wanted to take those home, and I lost them. And we realized that Zane brought one of my coats, not his own, and so we found this little shop called Rohan's, and met this lovely lad named Rob, and he helped us buy Zane a new coat. What a way to get a new coat, right? He makes me look littler than I really am. Maybe I am just little. <laughs> and the walking around we did was amazing. Do you hear the bells in the background? Look at the weather. It's just amazing. Just perfect.
I love these walls, these stone walls. Uh, my friend told me that when she was in school in York, they actually taught kids how to make them. Um, and I was wondering why they're vertical on the top, top row. And I think, if I'm correct, it was to add the height to keep the sheep in, and yet they were easy to remove if you had to get through there. I'm not sure. If you know, let me know in the comments. So we are rambling here in the Cotswolds. It's so beautiful. I don't know that I can leave. I mean, look at this. You may not be able to see it because of the lighting. It's just an iPhone I'm using. Look at this. Look at this. You know, the funny thing is in the States, we're so obsessed with, this is my property, I'm gonna fence it and you can't walk on it. Here it's, it doesn't matter if it's private property, you get to walk across these fields. And it's just so beautiful. Look at this, look at this, okay. Look at this. Look at that. I'm in love. I may never leave. I may become a Cotswolds resident. I think somebody has to sponsor me, right? Who's gonna do it? As we walked through villages, I would pretend that I was going to buy a house, and here's one I had my eye on. It was actually for sale. 1.85 million pounds. Now it's time for dinner, and we went to our hotel at the Old Stocks Inn for dinner. I had the two course, and Zane had the three course. And the cool thing about this was, you get a okay, roll it. Put drink, it the... a surprise drink mm -hmm. mixed, okay, a liqueur and a and sparkling, and you yeah. get to guess at what it is. So you roll the dice, which tells him the recipe. Right. Now he's going to go make our mystery drink. All right, go ahead and have a sip. I have to say, I guessed what was in his drink and my drink. Liqueur. The guy was pretty impressed. Mm. Something with pear. Okay. And here's the mackerel that I had along with the beef. Those were my two courses and Zane had the fish. And now it's day seven, and we're gonna go explore more villages in the Cotswolds. Oh, these roads are amazing. They're narrow and you have to find a place to pull over if you come into oncoming traffic. But look how beautiful and full of charm these villages are. It's unspeakable almost, and I felt like I was in a postcard. And I kept saying that. I'm in a postcard.
And now we're leaving the Cotswolds and heading up to Grassington in the Yorkshire area. And this is where All Creatures Great and Small is filmed, the current version. And the town of Grassington is actually where they do a lot of the filming. And what a beautiful drive. Look at this. This is our first roadblock, a bunch of cows. Look at our traffic jam. Hello. 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 Come on, girls. Hello. Hello. Look at this. Does anybody else moo to cows when you see them? I love this. I was so happy. And here we are in Grassington, and you will recognize this. This is where the Drover's Arms is, where we stayed, right there. And this was our room, just over his shoulder there. We walked around a lot that evening and just fell in love. I'm so in love with the Yorkshire area, truly. Um, a lot, more than I can even tell you. And here's our room, and look at what was waiting for us. Cheese and crackers and fruit and champagne. Squeaky floor. Window seat. And a view of the square. Do you remember in All Creatures Great and Small this latest season? remember that bathroom lights are on the outside wall, not on the inside. Hmm. People were so friendly and Zane stood out there for about 10 minutes talking to someone. So here is the first full English breakfast that Zane had and I nibbled on some of his meat because I couldn't eat all of this. And we did some driving around through the Yorkshire countryside and just absolutely loved this area so much. It was like my DNA was just coming alive. I just fell so in love with this whole area. My heart was just pounding with how beautiful this was. I loved all the varieties of sheep and cows that we saw along the way. And this is driving through, toward and through the Yorkshire Dales.
We pulled over and waited for this little fellow to go behind us because we didn't want to chase him out of that open gate because they have the, 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 the you know, cattle guard thing that his leg would go into. So we waited and waited and finally had to start inching forward to get him, you know, to get around him. But he was a cute guy and, you know, he finally did turn around and go behind us. We stopped in a little village called Settle. S-E-T-T-L-E. I loved this place and they had a great uh, store there and I did some shopping while there. And let me show you what I bought. A couple things. I bought this sweater. It's wool, but it's not itchy. This will be great. Oh, it's so soft. And so a pullover sweater and just a cardigan. A blue wool cardigan sweater. And the thing I loved about this shop was a pretty big shop. The prices were amazing. It wasn't like the touristy um shops in some of the center, you know, centers of the villages, because this was way out in the middle of, you know, almost nowhere. So, I got that. The Yorkshire Dales were also where um, several scenes from Harry Potter's The Deathly Hallows was filmed. You know, when they were out under that invisible dome in that rough cold, that was the Yorkshire Dales. So you might be recognizing some of the scenery there. We stopped at this one hotel. And I would love to come back here. We got a kind of a nice tour. And they showed us their wine um, area and some of the wines they have. Oh, I'll show you one. This wine here is maybe between $2,500 and $3,000, 1928. And then we went to Bolton Abbey, which was another um, big cathedral that Henry VIII had, you know, kind of destroyed in his, during his rule. And I love this these stepping stones. I did not have the guts to try them. They actually rebuilt much of this and they still conduct services there. I love the kneelers here, and they were really comfortable on the knees. And I loved this sign. Someone had crocheted the top of this mailbox with this little scene. I love this so much. And then, of course, it was time for a break. Zane had some soup, and so did I, a different kind. I think mine was butternut squash. Delicious, I have to say. And then, now it's time to head to York on day 10. And we stayed at Gray's Court, right inside the walls.
And there's the York Minster. What I love about this place is full of character, but lots of modern amenities. Here I am in York, right outside. Look, that's the cathedral right there. Look how beautiful, see the blue sky? Oh my goodness. I'll keep saying what I keep saying. Look at that. So, um, the drive-in was really nice. Um, these streets around here are super narrow. And uh, so we're just gonna park our car and walk everywhere. It's um, <laughs> too hair raising to be driving everywhere. But this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful room. Here's more of the hotel. This is the back part of the hotel that you can see from the wall that encircles the city. This is the York Minster and we went in and toured all around and it was breathtaking. We met up with my dear, dear longtime friend Carol and her husband and hit the pubs that evening. <laughs> And here's some of the food we ordered. Look at that fish and chips. And I had chicken wings. They were delicious. And then we hit another pub. Now the next morning, Carol took us all around York and we went up and walked the wall that surrounds York. I'm so grateful to Carol. She gave the best tour. Look here, look. This was the gateway to the Roman Fortress. Wow. Again, look at the weather. Stunning. There were many places with signs talking about how haunted their particular place was. And this is down in the shambles of York. This is a ghost store where you pick out your own little ghost that is handmade. We didn't go inside because there was a line, but I'd love to get one of those. And after this, we went and had a meetup with some of the followers of my channel, and that was one of my highlights. Hi, Amy, and hi, Edie. Yeah. <laughs>
I got a lovely note from Sienna. I will keep this forever. Sienna, your lovely note, and I met your mom. And also uh, from another family, Amy, your family, and everyone signed it, even little Edie. And then we went to Betty's and had tea upstairs. That was an amazing and delicious experience. was amazing and I even afterwards went downstairs to the tea room uh, the shop I mean and I bought the tea room blend can you see this and Earl Grey so these are big tin cans I'm never getting rid of them um, but I had to squeeze them into my suitcase but I was very excited to get these. This is Carol's son, Craig, who was friends with my oldest son. And he plays in a band around York and other places. He's the drummer. So we went out and watched him one evening. And that was just wonderful. And here we are walking home after a late night out listening to cover music. And they say this alleyway is haunted. And it's funny because the night before this night, I thought there was somebody walking next to me in our space. You know, when you feel somebody and they're right there. And I stepped up onto the curb to allow them to pass and because I kind of saw them in the corner of my eye and and I turned around and nobody was there. I thought it was just me imagining things. I don't know. Maybe I was. Maybe it was a ghost. I don't know. But knowing what I know now, I couldn't walk that alone. And there is our hotel. The next day, day 12, we went had and had more fish and chips, and Carol introduced me to this drink, and I'd never heard of that before. It was good.
I love the bedside commode drawer, <laughs> little toilet in the, and this one in the cupboard. Apparently, they still live in parts of this castle. And then we had tea outside before we headed over to the beautiful gardens. So here we are, walking on this lovely day. It's like a perfect spring day. The beautiful gardens, the walled gardens, going into Howard's Castle. Castle Howard. <laughs> My maid corrected me. And then it was time to say goodbye to Carol and head home to our hotel at, at the Gray's Court. Have a little meal. We stopped at this little Italian restaurant. And then the next day we drove down to Cambridge. Actually, it was the Duxford Airfield because they had the Battle of Britain show going on. Thank you to those who recommended Duxford to us. Made my husband so happy. We spent the entire day there. And of course, we met some friendly gentlemen who Zane loved talking with. We loved watching the Spitfires, the P-51s, and all the various planes, even modern day jets. The formations that they flew were actual formations that they flew during the war. And then we got to tour, do a private tour, on the B-17 Flying Fortress, which my grandfather was a gunner in, in that tiny little chamber. And this is how he would have been in that thing for hours at a time. Now remember, my grandfather was a jockey, and so that was a common position for jockeys when they joined the Air Force because they were so little. And the guy that demonstrated this to us showed us what that was like. Now, he was rather tall, so 
he wouldn't have fit in there like my grandfather would have. And we got to see the inside of the plane. And this was a working plane as well. And then the next day we are in Cambridge at the Fellows Hotel. And this, look at the weather again. And this is the day I got to meet up with my dear friend Charlotte from Whisper Audios ASMR and now her new channel ASMR with Charlotte. We had more fun making a couple videos together. She posted one on her page. It'll be in the link. And of course, I did the one where I interviewed her with my questionnaire. And it was as if we had known each other forever. And we had a blast. And when we were done um, with the videos, we <laughs> took a wrong turn and did a long walk trying to meet up with my husband, but then eventually figured it out and found him and we went down to the river and got on one of those punt boats and we're going punting, punting, <laughs> punting with the captain and with Charlotte. Oh, so we are. It's going to be about, we've got a small delay. It's a bucket list. If the wine merchant is done at the end, yeah. Yeah, we're going to go find a wine merchant and then go punting. And actually had somebody doing it. You could do it yourself, but we didn't want to mess with it. Those guys know what they're so doing. Is this a photo or is it video? Video. Oh, God. Oh. Sorry, just <laughs> Wait. That's good. Yeah. Posers. <laughs> He asked what brought us together. We told him about YouTube. And then it was time to take our lovely friend Charlotte back to her car at the bigger lot area. And it was a full moon. Now it's our last day and we're flying home. Our our animals were so happy to see us. Happy, happy girl, come on, let's go pee pee. Go potty, go potty, good girl. We're so happy. We're so happy. We're so happy girl. She's a happy girl. She's a happy girl. She's a happy girl. So happy. You're just so happy. Girl. You're so happy. And the cats were so happy to see us as well. Leo, Sputnik, and Apollo. And they didn't let us out of their sights for the longest time. So, that is our trip. Some of the things I didn't show you in terms of souvenirs. We got a lot of um, books and... And Edie, here's your tea bag you gave me. So we have a lot of smaller 
souvenir type things, but mostly books like, you know, little coffee table type books. Um, Roman baths. I think we got one from York and we got one from the Yorkshire area. And yeah, I do really regret losing those newspapers with, you know, the William and Catherine. Oh, because I love them. I adore them. I am huge fans of theirs. So anyway, but that's okay. I'm glad we got this tea. This is one of the biggest things we brought home. And the two sweaters, the jacket for Zane, and a little sheep from Stow and the Wool. A little wool sheep, he was really cute. He's with our, he, I've already put him on our travel shelf. Okay, I could have gone on for hours. I tried to make this as short as possible, but give you a, a full picture of it all. And it was so much fun. I want to go back. We both want to go back and do more of the north and more of the south, which we did not see. Um, I'd like to see the coast. I'd like to go into Northumberland and the Lake District and into Scotland. And um, and then, of course, Ireland. And I think Ireland will do as its own tour. So, yeah, I just, all the DNA in me was just waking up and, you know, getting on fire. It's just like, oh, girl, your roots, you know. <laughs> but I appreciate all your lovely comments as I posted things along my trip. Um, a little bit on the community page and in YouTube as well as on my Instagram page. And I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got a nice picture of it. And the next trip we're taking in a couple weeks is two weeks in Mexico. So I don't know that I'm going to do a full-on video about it. Um, we love Puerto Vallarta. That's where we go and stay. And we're taking a couple friends with us, so that will be fun too. Anyway, give me a thumbs up, follow, put the subscriber bell. I hate being a nag, but it helps the channel. And so there you have it. I appreciate you guys, and I will sign off for now. Thank you. I adore you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.